So some of the sensory receptors we have are going to be for touch, pain, temperature, and these are going to be housed within all these different types of uh, receptors. We have some superficial and a couple deep. So laminated, laminated corpuscles will be more deep. Okay. Accessory structures. Accessories will include hair, nails, and some glands. So hair present on most body surfaces, again, except for palms and soles of the feet. This is going to be dead keratinized epidermal cells. And then genetics will determine the type of hair you have. So parts of a hair. We have the shaft and follicles. Shaft is going to be the part you actually see projecting above the surface of the skin. The follicle will be below the skin. The root will be housed within the follicle, and this is going to be covered by epithelial root sheath and a dermal root sheath. So here we have the shaft of the hair, we have the root, and the follicle is along here. Now we also have a bulb. This is just the end of the hair, or shall we say the beginning of the hair. Also attached to the hair follicle or the root, we will see a small involuntary muscle, the erector pili muscle. This muscle is actually what causes the hair to stand on end or causing quote unquote goosebumps. Okay, we'll also see a sebaceous gland attached to each hair or an oil gland. This is for maintaining health of the hair. We also have a small root plexus, so this is going to be providing innervation or nerve supply to that root. And of course, at the base, we have blood supply and drainage. All right, so here we have the breakdown of the hair. We're not going to go too deep into this, but here we can see the root. So this is going to be all those most inner layers. The follicle is going to be the more outer layers. Then, of course, the bulb. We see everything coming together, creating the hair itself. All right, so some of the glands found within the skin. We have sebaceous glands or oil glands. They are going to be connected to the hair follicles. Now, as far as testing goes on quizzes, I will call them oil glands. I will not list them as sebaceous glands. Okay? That was a terrible line, by the way. Please ignore that. We have two different types of sweat glands, eccrine and apocrine. So eccrine glands, eccrine sweat glands are going to be the glands we think of normally whenever we think of sweating. So if we are out in 110 degree weather, just simply walking around if we have sweat collecting on our arms on our face this is going to be more of the eccrine sweat glands because we're helping to maintain body temperature so we're trying to cool the body down epocrine sweat glands on the other hand these are more in the hairy part of the skin so think of your underarms they are creating an odorous secretion now this is because of the type of cellular material they secrete Bacteria feed off of that cellular material, and the bacteria create the gas that we smell. So yes, do be aware, you have bacteria on you at all times. Okay, ceruminous glands, these are going to be specialized sweat glands or modified sweat glands found in the ear canal. This is where we get earwax. Nails. These are keratinized epidermal cells as well, so a lot like the hair. Uh, obviously a little tougher, a little more rigid. Uh, a few parts and pieces of the nail. We've got the free edge, which just means it is the end of the nail. We've got the main body of the nail. The lunula is going to be this small little uh, white half moon that we see at the base of the nail. And then the cuticle or the epinicium. And then the nail root is going to be underneath that skin. Another view. 
sagittal view here. Uh, free edge, nail body. The nail bed is what is underneath the nail body. The lunula, again, that little half moon. The cuticle, that small little fold of skin, that small little portion of epidermis there. And the nail root is going to be embedded in the skin. And then the nail matrix, which is going to be where we actually produce the cells that will make the nail. Okay, and up here, the hyponychium, this is where we are anchoring the end of the nail to the finger. All right, so from there, we just have a little bit of wound healing. So epidermal wound healing compared to deep wound healing. Epidermal, think about it. Epidermal, we are only entering that first layer of the integumentary system. So we have not reached the dermis. So it is more easily uh, healed. Uh, we have a lot of cell division again at that stratum basal. And this is going to help with reproduction of that skin in that area. So we're able to more easily reproduce those layers of skin in the correct manner. Deep wound healing, on the other hand, we have gone past the epidermis, either into the dermis or subcutaneous layer, of course, or deeper. This is where we're going to have our scar tissue form. So as we talked about in the tissue chapter, the dermis or the connective tissue found in the dermis is not well organized. So whenever we create these fibroblasts that are going to help reproduce this area of the skin, it is not laid in a very organized manner. This is what creates that scar tissue and it becomes hard and not very pliable. We have a very little blood supply running through there and this is what creates a um, lasting scar. All right, and from there, uh, the integumentary system as we age, uh, of course, everything starts to break down. We become less and less vibrant, um, which everybody is not very happy about. Okay, skin cancer, some clinical notes here. Uh, different types of skin cancer please get yourself checked do not let anything go uh, we've got basal cell carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma and malignant melanoma all very bad okay burns we talked about first degree only in the epidermis more like a sunburn second degree is going to reach the dermis this is where we're going to actually get blisters so sunburns can turn into second degree burns and then third degree this is where we actually have necrosis of that skin in certain areas which can be pretty harmful because that means we have damaged the blood vessels in that area and the skin is dying so please watch out for that do not let yourself get to that point of course right now uh, it is January, and most of the time you don't have to worry about that. So, uh, that is the end of this chapter, and I will see you for chapter 6.